So welcome back everyone, Mike here. Winter is back. Earlier this week I was kind of bragging about how nice it was around here. The sun was shining, warm temperatures, and I thought springtime was here. Apparently not just yet. Uh, today it's about 33 degrees, it's trying to snow a little bit. But I think first the next week it's supposed to be in the mid 50s, so it won't be long. But anyway, today's video. If uh, you belong to any like tractor forums or Facebook pages that are like firewood related or tractor related, I'm sure that you have seen this picture. Now that picture has been circulating around everywhere the last couple days. I've even got it in private messages on Facebook, email, text messages, and a lot of people are talking about it. Now a lot of people are also kind of debating on whether the picture's you know real or fake, uh, because some people said they can't see tire tracks in the snow. Some people can't understand how that could possibly happen. I don't know. I will say this though, first off, before we get started, if it is real, you know, I hope whoever that happened to is okay. Uh, that looked like a really dangerous situation. But uh, my gut feeling is that that is a, a real picture. And the reason I believe that is this. I can think of a couple different ways that that could very, very easily happen. And so what we're going to do here today, we're going to take the RK37, set it up on a tree in the yard, and kind of go over how that could happen and what, you know, what to watch out for if you're attempting to do something like that. All right, so we had the RK37 up against the tree, similar to what they were doing in that picture. I have the grapple on, they had a bucket on, but you get the idea. What do you think you're doing? Huh? What do you think you're doing? We're doing a demonstration. Of this tree? I'm not pushing it over for real. <laughs> Melissa thought I was pushing a tree over in the yard. No. No, I know you're not. I came out to tell you you're not. Okay. <laughs> what happened to springtime? I know. There's deer down there I was looking at. Oh. Hi, Greta. That's Greta again. Everybody commented in that video the other day. You mentioned chicken soup as soon as you, you were holding Greta. I know. I didn't even think of that. That's not true. We don't eat chicken at all. Yeah. All right, let's take another look at that picture real quick. Now looking at that picture, you can see they put a notch in the front of the tree. And then they came in with a back cut. Now that's, you know, normally how most people fell a tree, but there's a problem with that tree. It either one of two things. It either had some real severe lean to it, or it had some real big limbs on this side of the tree that were really wanting to pull that tree over. So if you have a hard leaner or a bunch of weight on one side, it'll have a tendency to barber chair, which is what you see in that picture. Now just about a month ago I did a video, I'll put it up above here, of how I deal with uh, you know dangerous trees like that. I do a bore cut and you leave a back strap. So you put your notch in the front, you bore cut in, you cut the center out, and then you're just leaving a strap in the back of the tree and you release that strap and the tree will fall over without barber chair. So he didn't do that. Obviously from the picture, he did not do that. He just did a standard notch, came in from the back. Now the question is, what I don't know is, was he trying to push a tree over or was he just using the tractor for some insurance or something and it was, uh, you know, kind of an innocent victim and suffered some collateral damage there. So I don't know if he was on the seat of the tractor trying to push it or if he just came in with that back cut without doing the bore cut and there's tons of, you know, lean on that tree or limbs and it pulled it over in a barber chair. I don't know which one, but it had to be one of those two things. So like I said, we don't know if he was pushing on the tree with the tractor or if he just had the tractor sitting like this while he was cutting, thinking that it was kind of some added insurance so the tree would go that direction. I don't think that tractor had enough power to break that tree off like it was. 
I think it's either heavy lean or some real heavy limbs on that side and a improper cut down below that caused that problem. So if you picture what's going to happen here, you have all this pressure on this tree leaning that way, you got your notch in the front, you start your back cut, and whether he stopped, tried pushing with the tractor, or if he just started cutting and it started to split, either way it was an improper cut down here that caused all the problems. As soon as that tree barber chaired, you know, he got in part way, and that's what I think. I think he was off the seat of the tractor and making that cut. And it started to split. He got, hopefully, he got out of the way. And when that thing came up, it caught right up underneath here, picked that tractor right up off the ground. That's what I think happened. Now, very seldom do I push trees over with a tractor. But when I do, they're smaller trees that I feel comfortable with. And the larger ones, what I make sure I do is I break all the roots around that root ball, at least the majority of them to really weaken that, you know, that root system on that tree. And then all it takes is a little push and the weight of the tree is what's taking it over. I don't get out there with a chainsaw, you know, make a notch, start your back cut and try to guess just about where you need to be and get on the tractor and push because that could end, uh, that could end very badly like you saw in that picture. Like I said, I don't know if he was off the tractor, on the tractor, either way that wasn't a good idea and you saw what the result was. Now I do push a lot of trees over with an excavator, which I'm actually going to go do that this evening down at the brick house. I'll show you how I do that. But all I do with the hoe is I break all those roots out, you know, go to the front, both sides. You kind of feel your way around the tree a little bit, get to know it a little bit, like I like to say. You can see, you know, where it's starting to move a little bit and then just take your time, give a little push and you'll get that tree to lay right down where you want with an excavator. But the excavator, I like it because you can stay a little further away from it and uh, especially dead trees. You gotta be really careful with them. You wanna push real easy and you wanna make sure that root system is really weak and the thing's just barely standing there because if it's still tight and you start pushing on a dead tree with a hoe, you could pull top, could break off and fall back on you. But I'm going to go down there right now and I'll show you how I take those trees down and we'll come back up here and wrap this up.
Now that last one I just took down, I kind of had to be extra careful because the electric line for the house runs right up there behind where I was working. And then down below there, a couple hundred feet, there's a bigger power line that runs across. Those two trees right there, they could reach it, so I'm going to have to be real careful with them. But all I have to take down are those two. This one right here. And that one. That tree right there, that's pretty ugly, but it is an uh, apple tree, and I think it still produces. So uh, I'm going to leave it alone. I may cut that one side off it. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Anyway, I'm going to head back up to the house. I'll come back down here in the morning. All right, I'm back up here at the house now. That went pretty well. I got four trees down in about 45 minutes. I really like using an excavator to do that type of work right there. Uh, the trees are dead though. You got to be very careful with dead trees. They're a little more dangerous than trees that are alive. Uh, but all I do, I bust those roots out, really weaken that root ball get to know the tree a little bit, just push on it. Just ever so easy, you know what I mean? And you can see what's moving, what it wants to do, and then you can go from there and just safely just lay it down right where you want to go. But anyway, back to that picture in this video. You know, I am by no means a professional, anything like that, but I do think I know what went wrong there. Obviously, the tree barber chaired. I don't know if he was pushing on it when, it, when he did it, or if he was just cutting it. Either way, wasn't a very good idea, and I hope the guy was okay. So I hope this video kind of gets you thinking a little bit at least. And if you don't mind, go back and watch that video that I did on uh, dangerous trees. I'll put that at the end of this video, and you can check that out. Something else I do on trees that have the potential to barber chair like that. And those are the ones that are hard leaners, like I said, or have a bunch of weight on one side of them, is I'll put a strap or a chain. A strap is better so you don't hit it with your chainsaw but you strap that tree tight so if it does split it keeps it from flying up in the air like that and uh, so that's something else you can do but anyway if it's you know you don't feel comfortable with it or something like that hire somebody to do it uh, but anyway I hope this video is helpful I hope it got you thinking a little bit and uh, be careful out there I'm telling you it can be dangerous and uh, it wouldn't end well but anyway like I always say if you enjoy these videos please hit the like button click subscribe and share them with your friends thanks